Introduction to Intensive Care Outline Introduction Organization of an ICU Policies and Procedures Documentation Clinical Handover Introduction Intensive Care Units ICU are the most expensive, technologically advanced and resource-intensive area of medical care. Intensive care is usually offered to those patients whose condition is potentially reversible and who have a good chance of surviving with intensive care support. The first medical ICUs were created primarily to care for patients with respiratory failure caused by poliomyelitis and other neuromuscular diseases. The first coronary care units, CCUs, were established in 1962 at Toronto General Hospital, Bethany Hospital in Kansas City and Presbyterian Hospital in Philadelphia. Organization of an ICU the ICU uses 8% of the total hospital budget in India and 14-20% to in USA. ICUs use sophisticated electronic instruments for observation, signaling, recording and measuring physiological functions. Types of ICU 1. Single Discipline ICU or Decentralized ICUs Cardiac Care Unit Pediatric ICU Neurosurgery ICU Neonatal ICU 2. Multidisciplinary or centralized ICU These include medical and surgical intensive care units or combination of all above. On the basis of level of care, four types of ICU have been proposed. Type 1 ICU have round-the-clock critical care, physician cover in ICU. Type 2 ICU have in-house full-time physician coverage by at least senior residents. Type 3 ICU intensive care by specially trained nurses and respiratory therapist with physician support for all from home. Type 4 ICU no intensive care on continuous basis but can prepare patient with life support for transfer. Physical facilities Location It is preferable to locate ICU adjacent to operating suits or recovery room. Easy access from emergency department is desirable. Beds no precise formula exists for number of beds in ICU. That depends upon the type of hospital, services offered and whether it is centralized or decentralized. In centralized type, the requirement may be up to 5% of total beds, while decentralized one, it may be about 1-2% to of total beds. Equipment the following equipments are provided in the ICU. O2 and compressed air. Mechanical ventilation assistance equipment. Manual breathing bags and ventilators or respirators. Cardiac defibrillators. Respirator and cardiac monitoring equipment. Thoracocentesis and thoracotomy sets. Tracheostomy sets, tourniquet, vascular cutdown set, infusion pump, laryngoscope and endotracheal tubes, tracheobronchial and gastric suction equipment, portable x ray. Staffing The ICU must be directed by a physician who has received special training acquired experience and achieved competence in a speciality related to the care provided in the unit. 
The recommended nurse patient ratio is 1 is to 1. Policies and procedures ICU policies and procedures need to be reviewed periodically and should relate to at least the following. Admission and discharge of patient System of sending consultation and informing to physician in duty Methods of procurement of drug or equipment and maintenance of essential life-saving drugs Checking of expiry date of drugs. Pertinent safety practices, especially fire orders. Visitors control and information to them. The role of ICU in internal or external disaster planning. Duties of officer in charge, nursing and paramedial staff working in ICU. Documentation. Documentation in the ICU is carried out for a number of reasons. It ensures continuity of care and provides up-to-date patient status. It fulfills the hospital policies which furnish the legal aspects of duty of care. It also gives an idea about the caseload. Automating intensive care unit documentation saves time and assists in interpreting data and planning of care. Whenever automated documentation is unavailable, data should be collected and computerized. Doctors must write down their diagnostic and treatment consideration, conversations with the patient, and physical examination findings. Clinical handover. Definition. Clinical handover is the effective transfer of professional responsibility and accountability or all aspects of care for a patient or group of patients to another person or professional group on a temporary or permanent basis. The quality and continuity of patient information shared between medical professionals is crucial in maintaining the highest standard of patient care. A lack of formal handover procedures, including categorized written information, leads to failure in communication of vital information at shift handover and can be implicated in critical incidents. Main points of clinical handover should include Escalation of deteriorating patients High equity to low equity transfer, example, intensive care unit to ward junior to senior clinicians, particularly between medical teams, inter-facility transfer, community and general practice to hospital, hospital to community and general practice, emergency department to ICU, multidisciplinary team handover, patient transfers for a test or appointment, shift to shift change over, the points to be emphasized upon during clinical handover are 1. The immediate clinical situation of the patient. Is this a deteriorating patient or are they stable or improving? Resuscitation status of the patient. What are the patient-centered care requirement? 2. The most important and recent observations. Any changes in the patient's condition, particularly any deteriorating observations, must be highlighted. The most relevant observations must be identified and communicated. Observations must always include specific vital signs. 3. Relevant background or history to the patient's clinical situation must be provided. Important examination and investigation results. Current diagnosis. Management to date. What has and has not worked. 4. Assessments and actions that need to occur. A shared understanding of the current treatment plan. Identifying and prioritizing tasks that must be completed. Setting accountability for tasks that must be completed. 
plans and triggers for escalated communication to seniors. 5. Timeframes and requirements for transition of care. Good handover benefits. Educational. A well-led handover session provides a useful setting for clinical education. Professional protection. Clean and accountable communication can protect a doctor against blame for errors which occur. Reduction of stress. Having the information and feeling informed allows doctors to feel less unsupported and more in control of a patient's care. Job satisfaction. Providing the best possible quality of care is highly rewarding and is fundamental to a doctor's sense of job satisfaction.